So I have a problem with coolant on my machine. Uh, whenever I run the coolant, uh, it catches on the on whatever tool's up here and on the tool holder and it just flings coolant everywhere. And I don't have a full coolant ex enclosure, I just have kind of this splash guard. And um, another problem is that the coolant pressure is, is pretty paltry. If you see more modern CNC machines, they usually have a ring of nozzles around the uh, a spindle and it just blasts coolant. And some machines even have 500 to 1,000 PSI coolant. It'll keep the chips flowing uh, away from where you're cutting. And if you're doing like deep pocket milling, this isn't a deep pocket obviously, but if you're, if you're really milling deep into a piece of material, <clears throat> you gotta be able to blow those chips out. So I am overhauling my coolant system today. I pulled off the sump, which used to be like right down here. I bought this pump from Harbor Freight uh, <clears throat> Harbor Freight can be really awesome. I think it's a one and a half horsepower pump for sprinkler system. Um, it'll generate up to like 35 PSI, which I think for me will be plenty. And I am adding onto the sump. This is my coolant sump here, and I've already started kind of cleaning off the edges for the, for the addition. I'll have like a box out here that um, the pump will sit on top of. Because if I don't, I will drain all, all the coolant in this tank before the coolant has a chance to flow back into the tank and into the pump and the pump will run dry. So that's what I've been doing here. I cut some material and ran it through the bead roller to kind of stiffen it up. Not the prettiest sheet metal job in the world, but sheet metal is not really my thing. I've also got Isaac here. Isaac is in the shop now. Howdy folks. He's here. This is Isaac. You haven't met him before. This is my partner. Um, we're here today to explore uh, the sexual tendencies of John Friedel. Okay, now I have to edit this out. <laughs> so ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, happily married, two kids. Freak. <laughs> so we got our box welded on there. Welds aren't beautiful because I am not a TIG welder. Professionally. I mean, I do it, but... Here's a pump. Our pump's gonna go on here somewhere. Here's our inlet. So we need a 90 to come off, go down to the bottom of the pump. We need some kind of filter too because I think this pump is not designed to take any kind of, of grit or dirt. So this will effectively add five gallons to our coolant reservoir. So I made a colossal mess earlier and also discovered that this thing works really, really well. So I'm going to show you. That is all the pressure I will ever need. But the problem is, is that this entire bed fills up with coolant. And then the coolant runs between the, um, the splash guard and the bed and comes dripping out down here, making a huge mess. Um, I just got done mopping it all up in the chips. The only really way for the coolant to get out is a, a passage back here that has a grating on it. And the chips will flow back there, clogging up the grating. So I have to figure out a way to basically get the coolant off the bed with the chips staying in the bed and uh, not overflowing. So the coolant pump alone is not enough. Uh, we need more. We need a way to keep the coolant inside the machine. So I built this shower curtain enclosure and it's kind of a rinketing setup, but um, it's actually gonna work pretty well. Gotta cut a couple more shower curtains and the, uh, the curtains will actually drape over inside the uh, splash guard so that we'll have 100% coolant enclosure, the close to 100%. I also built this manifold. The pump feeds this manifold and we'll have six uh, little flexible tubes coming off that we can we can uh, focus the coolant on. And yeah, it's coming, quite, coming right along. So I ordered more of these flex nozzles and they're coming from California. They're not here yet, obviously. 
but I was able to cobble, cobble together enough quarter inch NPT uh, thread hardware to get four, four lines running. And uh, after testing, I think that's all I'm gonna be able to get running because the, the pump moves so much coolant. It'll empty the tank, it'll overflow this trough down here, spilling chips and coolant everywhere. Um, and it's just, it's just a bit much. That pump is a bit much. Now, um, I'm gonna nickname this machine Blasty McBlaster Face, and in a second you're gonna see why. Oh wait, I gotta plug it in. Yep, not plugged in. I need to run more electric in my shop. Oh. See? Yeah. There's a lot of coolant splashing everywhere. You can see it flowing down here in the trough. See it moves around the bed of the machine. It's just it's just so much. It's awesome. I just love it. But it gets coolant everywhere. I'm actually worried that I'm going to be spraying so much coolant and there's going to be so much mist that I will burn through my spindle bearings. So last night I ran the machine for about a half hour cutting parts with this new coolant system. We have a um, shower curtain installed. Um, it's kind of a rink dink enclosure, but it works really, really, really well. I mean, I, I get no splash over from the coolant onto the floor or anything else. Pretty much keeps everything inside. All of the chips wash away from the work area, down the back of the machine, and um, to this screen right here. The only drawback is I have to clean this screen manually probably ever, every 10 minutes um, because I don't have a chip conveyor. And then it drains in the coolant tank and I have another like smaller screen um, inside the tank to keep the smaller chips from the pump. So it does really well. I was worried that the coolant would uh, would blast up into the spindle bearings. I thought that the pressure and all of the splashing would, would send uh, small particles, small little droplets of coolant and mist up past this uh, seal. Actually, there's not really a seal there. There's just a pretty tight uh, fit. It's not an interference fit, but it's pretty close. <clears throat> I thought it would get thrown up past that fit up into the spindle bearing. I don't know if you can see it there. There are the, there are the rollers, or the balls. And I thought it would wash out the Kuber Isoflex grease. And when that happens, your spindle bearings will go bad prematurely. It's not good. So I took this cap off last night and uh, um, I discovered that the grease is still... It's still up there, it's not getting washed away. There was like zero coolant up in this area. This is just grease that was thrown out from the bearing after I greased the bearing um, a few months ago. So that is good. The only other thing I have to worry about is chips getting splashed up onto these tapers. Um, if that happens, then obviously when, when, the, when the machine goes to make a tool change, the tool will go up inside the spindle and the taper won't match perfectly because there will be a small chip there. So I'm thinking maybe of setting up a compressed air and, um, and setting the tool changer such that in the middle of a tool change, that compressed air will blast uh, over the top of one of these tool holders and, and knock any chips that they're there off. So that's the one thing that I could probably add to this whole system to make it even more bulletproof. Other than that, I really feel like the machine is ready for, uh, for full-on production mode. So, yeah, I'll show a little bit more here in a minute of the machine actually running with the coolant blasting. It's pretty impressive. Another thing I did was add an insane amount of light. Um, I like lots and lots of light when I work, so I went to Lowe's and I got these uh, work lights, these LED work lights. This one's the, I think, 1500 lumen one. And this one in the back, that's a, that's the LED from, I think a 900 lumen one. And what I did is I, I machined a, a woman a block to hold the actual LED. And then I put magnets in the back of the block so I could just kind of stick it anywhere. 
and then I mounted the ballast inside my cabinet here. And the uh, the net effect is that I have a shiznit load of light for my machine, which I love. This is what she looks like when she's running with full coolant. Try to get a peek behind this curtain. Lots and lots of pressure, lots of flow. Cooler runs down a hole in the back of the machine, comes down into these troughs, and chips collect here. Second op complete. Good job, Matsura. Good job. <laughs>